Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for a brand new series. A scrap mechanic, oh my gosh, you guys give me so great gaming suggestions. This game is totally up my alley, I just love it and you will probably too. Scrap mechanic will allow us to be as creative as can be, building cars, building planes, building rockets, houses, moving parts, rotation is everything you need and this game totally proves it. Now this is another title in early access but well deserved so. It currently only contains a creative mode, survival will come eventually. You can also see we can change our character into a, a little female or a little male. However, without any further ado, let's dive into a new game. As I said, only creative. We're gonna call this Nathan a YouTube. We can choose between a terrain or a flat world. Flat world is more, you know, for your creative tests and stuff like that. And the terrain world is very similar to what you see in the background. The settings we're gonna leave at the default. Let's create that world. Hello, here we are finally in the world. We don't have to read that. I'm going to explain everything to you as best as I can. So there we go. This is the world of Scrap Mechanic. I do adore the cartoony graphics. I believe they are quite fitting for the type of game we have here. However, let's get a little bit into an open area so that I can explain you the basics. And this is how we start with I. We can open up our creative inventory and you can see there are quite a bunch of blocks already. They're currently categorized into, you know, four types of items. First and foremost, I want to empty my hotbar. I want to rearrange this the way I would like to. Oh, before I remove that, let's have a quick look into the mechanics handbook because you just have to appreciate their way of doing the tutorial. You can see, have a look into the different categories and kind of learn about the game using the graphics. I do appreciate that. However, let's get rid of that. The two most important tools I'm gonna need is a lift and right down here the connection tool. I want these to be at my disposal all the time. So these are the character tools. The second category of blocks are these right here which are just basic building blocks but you can actually draw them out. What that means I will show you in a second. I'm gonna snatch myself a metal, a wood and a brick block right there. Then we come to the functional blocks and they go all the way up to here the radio. No actually tires are also kind of a functional block. The lights kind of suck. They will have to work a little bit on that. So let's say functional blocks go up to the wheels and then the rest are just more or less structural or decorational blocks. So when it comes to functionality, these are the only items currently in the game that you have to concern yourself with. And then from here on, it is more the creative part of the building process. So in my opinion, the bearing is what you should also always have on your hotbar. The bearing is like the most important thing. Imagine it's like adding a new structure on top of something, but this is going to be rotationable into any angle that you wish with the click of a button. And this opens up so many possibilities. However, we first should have a look at the building aspect. I can simply left click in order to add a block. This block is now stuck to the ground and I cannot move it around. You can also see there are a bunch of arrows. They are currently laying flat on the ground, which means if I draw this out, I will create some kind of a platform right there. And this type of building you can only do with these types of building blocks. You can do the same thing in reverse. You can, for instance, right click in order to get rid of a block and you can see now it is an independent object. And of course, I also have the capability of dragging the removing tool in order to get rid of everything easily. So that is already good to know, but what if you actually want to go for a vessel? And this is exactly what the lift is used for. We can place this baby right here and we can use the up and down arrows in order to lift this thing up and down. Isn't that amazing? It's brilliant. Yes, it is. Now, of course, what we would want to do is add our little vessel on top of here. For instance, we could have like a, a little wooden thing right here. Then we want to lift it up in order to be able to build beneath it. We can, of course, also use control 
cool to even get down more crouching, you know. But this lift thing is definitely much more convenient. However, switches will not work as long as your vessel is on the lift. So you will have to remove this thing eventually. And of course it is again an independent structure. However, as long as you started a vessel building with a lift, you can always take your lift again, aim at this vessel, left click and place it again onto the lift. And there we go, you can work on it again. So this is just a brilliant mechanic, I would say. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the controls, let's go ahead and build our first driving car. For that, I'm just going to make a little metal frame right here. We want the car to have about this size or so. And of course, we're going to expand it towards the sides a little bit so it doesn't tilt too easily. We're just going to do a simple car today. I want to start another big project today. But of course, it would be good to have a quick look at all the components we find here so in this video you will have all these explained anyways the first thing we probably want is a driver's seat you have the option between the driver's seat or a normal seat and of course the driver's seat is what you would want in order to be able to also influence the wheels and everything from it so we're gonna place that in the front of our vessel right there great now we need to attach the wheels somehow for the wheels of course we need wheels we can go with normal wheels or big ones however we might also want to go with a suspension now you have the off-road suspension which is a lot more extreme for this vessel a sport suspension will actually do now in order to be able to place this correctly let's actually set up a little something here which is gonna go up about two blocks on each side here where we want to attach the wheels and then we are also gonna go one over we are gonna lift this a little bit and at the bottom right here we're gonna set a bearing this bearing right here will help us to to steer around the vessel eventually. So you have to imagine the suspension will go down below and then the wheel will be attached as such. And therefore, if we can turn this around, we will be able to steer the wheels. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you about the building mode is, you see that my arrows are now actually facing into another plane. You can change this using Q. You can, in general, rotate objects using Q. So right now I have the ability to expand into these two sides. When I press Q, then there is a plane shift as you can see and Q once again we have the flat plane. So just as a little side note. Anyways, one thing you cannot do is attach the suspension directly to bearings. What we want to do is attach another block to the bearing. I'm gonna go with a wooden block just so that we know where the bearings are. And then beneath the wooden block we can have our little suspension here. We might want to lift this up even more and then we're gonna have yet another block right there and of course the wheel goes here. But as usual a wheel needs to turn around so we're gonna set another bearing so this wheel will be able to turn around. Also whenever you do something with a bearing your character will use another tool just so you get a little confirmation you actually attached it to the bearing and not to something else. Okay so now that we have that let's actually rinse and repeat this for each wheel right there. Just give me a second in order to achieve that. And there we go. All the wheels are now attached. Of course now comes the interesting part. We kind of want to hook stuff up with each other. Let's actually get rid of the lift. Right, so we have a bunch of bearings on board. We also have a driver's seat. So let's go ahead and switch to the connection tool. And you can see all the possible connection hotspots, which of course are the bearings and in our case, the driver's seat right here. In order to hook something up with each other, you just click and drag from one point to the other. One thing you have to be aware of is that you can only hook up one thing with the other. So I cannot hook a second seat up to also control this bearing at the same time. But anyways, we do not want to hook these bearings up just yet. What we want to hook up are the steering bearings. So imagine we can turn this around, therefore we can turn the wheel around. We're gonna make a four-wheel steering car, if you weren't aware of that. And now all we have to do is hook up these bearings. As soon as we do, you can actually see the way they will be rotating around. So let's quickly hook up the driver's seat to all of these steering points right there. Then we want to hop into the vessel and kind of check what is happening. Oh, and you can see my little guy also here. I can actually zoom to first perspective using X and zoom back using C. 
Which is an interesting choice. Anyways, I cannot use a W just yet. We have no motor. It will not go. But I can use A and D in order to turn around. And you can already see there's something wrong. This wouldn't really work. So pressing A, I can see that the front wheels are going into the wrong direction. So all we have to do is look at this. And with the right click, we can switch the direction they are turning. So now if I do that, you can see all the wheels are turning into the right direction. And we will be able to make a little turn. Okay, so far so good. Now, of course, we also need a motor. So let's get rid of that stuff that we don't need anymore. And we're going to grab ourselves a engine. Now, you can either go with a gas engine or electric engine where the gas engine has a lot more power. But of course, for a lot of vessel, the gas engine might also be an overkill. Electric engines I recommend for contraptions and not necessarily for cars. But we will get to that later. Anyways, let's place a D motor just behind the seat here. And I want this to turn around. So we're going to use Q until it is facing this way. Yeah, that seems about right. Maybe you saw it. It added a little bit of weight to the car. Anyways, if we have a look into here, you can see it is currently shut off, which is a good thing because we want to hook this up to all of the wheels right there. And we don't want the engine to turn by itself. We want to be able to actually control it from the seat. It can also see if we look at these arrows they will be going backwards these wheels so we have to switch it around we're going to do the same thing with this one which is already facing into the right direction hook the motor up to these guys also turn this around and to these guys i think one engine you can hook up to five bearings or something like that not entirely sure however we want to be able to control the power of this engine from the seat as well so we're going to drag a line from the seat to the engine as well and now we will be able to control control it. That means if I give this a little bit of power, we probably don't need too much. This might be enough. Over here is totally an overkill and it will just flip you. But there we go. It shouldn't go by itself. So if we hop into the seat and actually drive a little bit, you can already see that this is kind of a functioning car. It's also a very agile car due to the four wheel steering. But I can already see this is a weak car. So maybe we go up to four here. That should be good. And now now we are actually able to kind of explore this world, have a little look around. Okay, maybe four wheel steering is a little bit of an overkill, but the basic car concept is still working out and I was able to show you what I wanted to show you. However, my aim with this series is going to be that we are working on an insane construction. I want to have myself a movable, flyable, unfoldable, huge and crazy house. And this is exactly what you can do only with these freaking bearings because there is a very important block I haven't shown you yet, which is the controller. This thing makes everything better. So just to prove you something that you can use motors individually to steer those parts, we are going to disable this connection and the car should just drive by itself. Yeah, there we go. And we pick it up. Yeah, I think I got it. Look at that. We can put it right back on here and it will disappear, which is great. So I didn't really lose it. Let's hook this up again. Okay, now controller. How do we use controllers? Let's make a little example right here. For instance, I want to make myself a little ramp that goes down, but when I want to drive, it goes up. Something like that. So why the heck not? We are going to attach something right here. This is where my ramp is going to start. We're going to make the ramp out of bricks just so that you can clearly see it. And I want to make sure that I add all of my blocks to the current new structure that I have made. Maybe we're going to need three or four blocks in order to be able to make a good ramp. Yeah, that could be good. And we also want to turn this 90, yeah, 105 degrees or so. Anyways, we're going to need a controller. And I also want to get a switch. You have a switch which differs from the button right next to it in terms of the switch you click once in order to enable whatever it enables. And it will go through all the procedures that are activated with the switch. And if you click the switch again, it will undo everything in reverse. However, in order to achieve the same thing you have to press the button you have to keep it pressed and as soon as you release it it's the same thing as clicking this a second time so this is the only difference between those a controller right here can be anywhere on the structure i do like to hide them usually at least a little bit however we're just gonna have this right here it is not really facing up however it doesn't really matter we can have a look into here there are no bearings connected so bearings is the thing you connect to that let's grab our connection tool and 
hook it up to this new bearing. And as I said, only one connection allowed. I cannot influence this for instance because it is already hooked up. I hope this will actually change eventually. I really need the option to hook up multiple things with each other. Anyways, you can see the green arrow, which is the plus direction, is facing into this direction, which would mean it would rotate into the right direction if we added a few things. Now that we have hooked it up to the controller, we can actually see the first stage. So the rotation editor is really, really easy to understand. The first setting right here is the current state. So if I switch this, for instance, to 90 degrees, then this would change the default state and the thing would rotate around as soon as I get rid of the lift. So you can see the default setting is now 90 degrees. However, that's not really what we want. As I said, I wanted after the click of a button to have this go around 105 degrees. So the current setting now is zero degrees, but as soon as I hook up a button, for instance, right here and connect this with our controller, then I can simply click the button and it will go to the second stage that we have set. And you can see I guesstimated this totally wrong. We should have done it maybe at the bottom part. So yeah, I'm also still learning the game. Maybe let's actually quickly fix that just for a better effect. So instead of having the bearing here, I want it to be right there. And this time we're gonna make it with metal. So you can see the bearing is totally invisible, but the connected textures are actually kind of working. So we're gonna hook this up, make a little thing right there on top of it. Yeah, beautiful. Now, of course, we need to re-hook it up right there. And we also need to redo the settings. So I want this to go 105 or so degrees. And yes, indeed, that is much better. Now we can complete this ramp. Oh, look at that. I actually misplaced these guys. Maybe we're actually going to go one further 120 degrees. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a ramp and we can go up here. And as soon as we click the button, it is again going up. Great. Look at that. And it is just completing the wall here. I love it. I just love it. With that, you can do every freaking thing. You can make transformers. You can make, as I said, unfolding, unflippable, un Flubbleable houses. I can't wait to test everything that I already came up in my flat world with you guys together. Now, since we already have a button right here, I would suggest we're gonna attach it to the cockpit as well, which will give it a number from one to eight or nine, I believe. And it will go directly into your hotbar when you hop into the seat. So you can now see on number one, I do have my little switch and I can even use it from the cockpit. So if we want to bring this back up, we can and then we can just simply drive around. And you can see weight actually plays an important role. This vessel now has a totally different weight distribution. Okay, then we don't have a lot of things left. There's just the thruster that we still need to discuss and maybe the sensor, even though I haven't used the sensor for too much yet, but with the sensor, you can do crazy things like memory, you know, computer memory stuff. Guys, the potential is amazing. Anyways, what a sensor will do is it will detect anything other than the main structure. So it will also detect movable parts. So if I hop into the sensor, you can see now it is lit green. Maybe we can actually arrange something here. Yeah, we're going to do something like this. And then we are going to set the sensor here. Now, currently it is not set. But as soon as I click this button, you saw it flash up for just a tiny second. There you go. And with that, of course, you can make crazy structures because it is just like a button. So I could, for instance, remove this connection and hook it up to here instead. And now as soon as I hop into here, the thing will be moving, which is great. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> I might not have set this up perfectly because now it is basically going back and forth. You see that <laughs> enabling, disabling the sensor, but it is still a proof of concept. Now, I actually kind of like that. Maybe let's hook even something else up right there. A thruster. Of course, you need that for your flying vessels. Oh, geez. Maybe this is not a good idea. Come on. Dis disable you. Ah, there we go. Okay. So now what we can do, for instance, is hook up this thruster. And of course, uh, for the time being, we want to kind of go back. So maybe another switch to this guy. And ah, there we go. Okay. So the thruster is now facing downwards. Of course, it will thrust downwards. However, I just want to show you, you can enable it disable it. They don't have 
like a more thrust or less thrust setting, they are just going. But in combination with the sensors and the thrusters, you could theoretically make a more or less stable hovercraft. It has been done before in this game many times. And there we go, I think these were all of the functional blocks you need to know in order to create the craziest things. And that's exactly what we're gonna start with in the next episode. I can't wait for you to tune in again. Now, if you want to see more of Scrap Mechanic, don't forget get to leave down your support let me know what kinds of creations you want me to come up with let me tell you almost anything is possible i'm sure in some way or the other we can make a transformer car you know transforming into a robot or a, a car as i said we're gonna start with an unfoldable drivable house of awesomeness but other than that guys thank you so much for watching have a great time and hopefully i'm gonna catch you in the next one bye bye